Okay, so we're rolling, I think. Yeah. Okay, and this is the review uh, after one year, more or less, of the Fido T1. Uh, so I hope this works out with the sound and all of that. Uh, so this is the replacement Fido T1 bike that came after six months of use. Uh, for those that don't know, Fido Worldwide sent out a replacement. Uh, this is a replacement bike after a few hundred miles. Let me see how many miles we have on this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 362. Okay, this is the new bike that I've put into action this year. Um, okay, so front to back, let's go. So we have these tyres here. And I have to say, these tyres have been very good. On the old bike, uh, on the back ones, they were, let's say, getting worn um, after about 2,000 miles, more or less. Uh, and the front ones weren't showing any signs of wear at all. Uh, these show a very shallow tread, but actually they're very, very good, especially in the wet and everything. The only problem with these CST tires is that they're very expensive to replace. Um, very easy tires to put on. You can put them on and off with your bare hands if you get a puncher at the side of the road or anything. They really are very good and very quiet tire. And I highly recommend them, but they're 67 euro a pop. So I don't fancy that, really. Um, if you can get them cheaper, maybe, maybe 40 euro each if you can get them for that, they'd be very good road tire, without a doubt. Um, I recommend them. They're very, very expensive to replace. But apart from that, recommended. Look to get about two thousand miles for the back tire and probably four thousand miles for the front okay on the road that's very good yeah okay uh, you've got very nice suspension on the front of this I always thought it was very good and uh, no complaints it, re it feels really nice now this new Fido bike has replacement hydraulic brakes actually um, and they're very very good they're excellent much better than the old brakes and these are the hydraulic brakes they're on uh, 20, uh, no, what is it, 58 inch, is it 58, uh, 60, I can't remember, no, 158 maybe, uh, disc brakes or whatever, sorry, 180 disc brakes, that's the one, and they really are excellent, and they're hydraulic and all of that, and they've been very, very good so far, for the last 380 odd miles. Um, the original brakes were also good, but they need a lot of calibration, you had to adjust them all the time, the actual cable brakes. But they were also capable of being very, very good. Uh, if you're using the, the original ones, I recommend that you put a spot, just a spot of uh, the adjustment wheel of uh, tread lock, actually. Lock type tread lock. Okay. Uh, so you've got this big light on the front. I should probably turn it on there. And there it is, in the daylight. Uh, it's very, very good. It's got high beam and low beam. It's very good at night, and I always ride with it during the day in order to be seen. And uh, that's it in broad daylight under the sun. And I don't know how that's coming out in camera, but it is very, very good indeed. Yeah, I recommend it highly. Uh, so, well done to Fido on the light. Now, if you've got problems adjusting this light, a lot of people have, it doesn't rise up high enough. Uh, what I did here, let me turn off that light for a second. What I did was I simply put in, in this point here, uh, you might see the blue thing here, maybe. Uh, I put in a little uh, cable tie on each side, the bracket, and on each side a bit of it, and I cut over the scissors. And that enables you to bring up the whole bracket a bit, therefore you have better adjustment here. The adjustment is done with these two screws on each side here. Okay, so um, recommend the light, it's brilliant. As is the basket front basket has been great. Uh, I retain this white thing yeah, as to act as a floor. You can put in a floor if you wanted to. Good idea, simple thing. Maybe a little bit of thin plywood or something. Anything at all. And it'll act as a, as a false floor. Uh, it's also really useful for putting in, you can put in bungees and as you can see here I use it for tying drinks up or anything else that you need to tie into. The basket is very strong with steel. And it takes, um, it, it can take a whole, it, it weighs about two pounds, and it can take a 
whole shopping bag full of groceries, really heavy bags. You can also attach uh, things to it inside, like rucksacks or whatever you need it to extra bag inside. There's a lot you can do with that basket and uh, very useful item. Yeah, I have to say, it's great to do. Okay, um, so I just use it like that to toss the powder in. What have you. Okay, so coming to the handlebars. Handlebars is another really good feature. This bike can go around here on the sun on the back. A bit better, maybe. Uh, the handlebars give this bike a lot of personality. They're wide, but they're not too wide. They're comfortable. I put in originally this riser stem to give me more height, and that's it's very, very comfortable, very restful, and it gives this bike uh, a lot of personality. Uh, now, let me talk about this new display here. This is the revised display from Fido. Um, and it's better than the old one. The old one was good too, except that it didn't actually have a mileometer or an odometer for recording the miles. This one here does, and by hitting the power button twice too quickly, you can toggle it between miles and kilometers. I prefer to have it in miles. It gives me 382. You can also put on a trip monitor if you want to particularly record a trip, but the long-term mileage is more useful. So since Christmas, I've done 382 miles on this. Um, okay, so uh, you also have an indicator if you have your headlight on, as you can see the headlight's on now, and there it is. So it shows it as well, because it's easy to forget in the day that you have the headlight on. Uh, that speedometer can be used even when it's in the off mode. Right now it's, it's not in any of the driving modes, it's in pass zero. If you hit it once, it gives you pass one, pass two, pass three. So there's the power levels. I hope that comes out on camera. But when you hit a pass, pass zero, it's very useful because in an area like this here, where it's flat ground along by the seafront or the parks, I like to go along by in in I like to go along in free pedaling with no power at all, and that defaults to about eight or nine miles per hour actually. And it's very, very restful, and it's also very useful. So it, sh it still shows you the speeds, it clocks up the miles, and it still gives you access to the headlight and also the horn, which is horribly loud. So uh, this is a much better display than the, than the original one they replaced. Okay. Um, okay. The one thing this display, this display does not have is it doesn't include the cruise control ability on the bike. That never bothered me because I never used it, frankly. Okay, so <coughs> uh, full marks of the brakes, rush brakes, new hydraulic brakes, super. So far they've been very, very good, I can't fault them. You have your usual, on this T1, uh, the usual gear selector or the, the, the back derailleur that's it there, seven cog. Seven cog. Uh, segment and it works okay it works very good I can't really complain it's a little notch better than I think than, than, than the traditional silver Shimano one uh, and you hit this button here to to bring it up and this one here brings it back down the gear so it's very functional I have no complaints it's very good yeah okay now moving back the bike uh, so Fido with the frame replacement um, they claim to have put in three walls inside this here to reinforce the tube to stop it breaking. The original T1 used to break along here, apparently. My one didn't, so I sold it on for a friend. Um, but in doing so, they ch changed the profile of the bike a little bit. They have this reinforcement stub welded in here, which is good. But the crossbar that goes across here uh, is about an inch lower than the old one and the whole bike has a little bit slow center of gravity, lower gravity, a center of gravity I think. Um, this meant that fitting this box here from Radrunner, which has worked out very very useful, is a bit tougher because you have to take a blowtorch and melt the bottom floor of the thing here and push down on it to get it to fit into the profile here. It's not as handy to put them into as on the old T1. But anyway, that's only a small detail. Uh, because the new bike, you do actually have 
a lower saddle point here. It's about two inches lower, in fact. So you do have, if you're a very small person, assuming you don't have one of these boxes, uh, you have the ability to put down the saddle to a very, very low point here, well, just above the battery, let's say. Okay, so you've got, you got good possibility here. I like to have the saddle high, um, just approximately the same height as this here. Um, if it's even an inch lower, my back starts to ache. So this really suits me where the saddle is right now. Um, so I like it high up. Okay, so that's the bike so far. So let's move on. Now the battery, um, it's the same old battery. And at this stage I have two or two and a half thousand miles on it, I suppose. Um, so what I've found with experiment and all the rest, so I cycle the battery between, let's say more or less, 30 and 90 percent. I charge it up to 90 percent and I discharge it down to roughly 30. And for that I'm getting about um, let's say in PAS 2 25 miles charge more or less. Now PAS 2 on this new bike uh, the PAS 1, 2 and 3 here's PAS 1 Paz 1 on this new bike brings you to about 12 miles per hour. Paz 2 goes to about 18. Okay. And the Paz 3 goes to about 23 miles per hour, which really drains the battery a lot, and I never use it. Um, apart from that, they're all the same in terms of power levels. Just the cut-off limit at the top is what's different. Uh, so PAS 2 is what I normally use to dash across town or the city or whatever else and it's a maximum of 18 miles per hour, let's say 30 kilometers I think. Uh, however, what I've found is that really useful is if you have to go a longer distance out of town, maybe you want to go 50 miles run, a round trip 50 miles and you're not sure if you're going to get a charge or something like that, if you have time on your hands then put it on to PAS 1. This brings you to a limit of about 12 miles per hour before the power cuts out and after that you're on your own. That means that you will very often, maybe half the time, be without using any power because you'll be going down hills, you'll be going fast, drifting down hills and all of that. So the motor will switch off quite a lot of the time. So in fact it only uses about half the power that PAS 2 does. So PAS 1 is very, very useful if you're not in an immediate hurry and 12 or 13 miles per hour on the flat uh, is still quite okay and quite useful if you're if you're prepared to spend an extra half hour to get to your destination or whatever it is. So it's really useful and uh, it means you can get out of town and do a round trip of 50 miles if you had to. And then you have the other hyper mileage, as I call it means that you could switch off the battery, switch off the power levels completely like this. There it is, that's power zero. Now you're just pedaling alone. And if you do that, uh, you're using of course no power. The power used by the headlight is I think about 0.2 amps, very very little. Nothing to worry about. So you can leave your headlight on and if you're prepared to do that you'll sit at about 9 to 10 miles per hour. Sometimes you'll drift faster. And if you want a hyper mile, you could, you could have it in that mode, PAS 0 as I call it, uh, and only turn it into PAS 1 when you need to go up a hill, which will only take a few seconds. And if you do that, you'll get incredible mileage from the bike. Um, and if you have time in your hands, that can really work wonders for your mileage to be able to enable you to go out of town and go a big distance and all the rest. So there's no problem actually using that. So that's a great thing to explore and it puts a completely different dimension on this bike. Now before I finish up on the speeds and the powers and all of that, I should have a little bit about legislation here in Europe and elsewhere. And uh, this idea of putting it, putting the limit to 23 kilometers per hour or 15 miles per hour, that's a bit ridiculous. I'm not asking much more. All I need is 18 miles per hour, it would be fine, but the average cyclist will go 17 and 18 miles per hour. So they should bring up that limit to maybe 18 or 19, maximum 20 miles per hour. I'm not actually asking 
for more, in fact. I don't think anybody needs it. Um, and it can be dangerous too. I, I have no problem about limiting speeds to 22 or 25 miles per hour. Um, this bike is great fun if you give it a lot of power. Um, but it's it's hard on the battery and it's a different type of a creature. It's not really an off-road bike. You can use it, it'll go off-road, no problem. Change your tires and you'll have some fun off-road. It's not the best bike in the world for off-road. It's not the lightest. It's about 79, 80 pounds in weight. And 10 pounds heavier than what I would like, really. Um, but anyway, you know, it is what it is. Now, the mag wheels, I, sh I forgot to say, they're really wonderful. Now, I, I originally weighed this mag wheel when it was new and took off the front wheel entire and weighed it, and it's about five and a half pounds. It's probably only a pound heavier um, than, than a, a normal spoke wheel that you get in the Cyrus of the motor, for example. So it's really, they're really not, they don't add much weight to the bike, but to give you great comfort and you don't have to be worried about spokes or any other nonsense like that. So, um, yeah, I recommend them. Big thumbs up for the mags, mag wheels. They have worked out really well. Yeah. Okay, now what else? Let's move on. Uh, so the battery, that's the battery. So, uh, it's... I don't know how the battery, how long the battery's going to last, but it's been lasting good. It's been good. And like I say, I look to cycle it between 90 and down to 30 percent. Up and down there. I uh, don't like to stretch it too much, but I do use the bike every day, so it works out well. Now this uh, suspension post and saddle, this is, this is, all the bikes come with the suspension post here. Um, it's quite good really, uh, the bike isn't in, in need of any great suspension, uh, it helps. And I have added this nice big saddle in, but the original saddle sheet is, is quite a springy affair as well. Uh, so each to their own when it comes to saddles, just change it out, whatever you have to do. Um, so you can hinge it off, of course, for those who don't know, and just put up the battery here. Uh, normally, the key. I normally leave the key in in the actual bike, and I keep a spare one with me in case it erupts, rather than having to hunt around for yet another key. So I just leave it there and I lock it and unlock it. Um, okay. So uh, now in the bike, I've bungeed this. Uh, bag on this bag is a very handy bag. I picked up in a tool Stanley tool bag, and the whole battery fits entirely into this bag. And I can detach it from the bike easy with bungee and bring it away and uh, carry it around my shoulder through the you know, shopping mall or wherever else. Because the battery is more than half the cost of the bike, so it's important not to leave it on the bike if you're locking it up in a public area. And by the way, do lock it in a public area. <laughs> Don't, don't try otherwise. Um, so you've got a bit of a different frame profile because of the new frame. Um, now, I should say about the controller, when people received it originally, they didn't, uh, they found the new bike was limited to about 15 miles per hour. The only thing you have to change out is the controller. The original controller is identical to the new one. Um, but by changing it, it gives it a better speed, and it removes those speed limits. Um, so, in my case, I've kept the two controllers and just sold on the remains of the bike. Now, one good thing that the new bike has included, it's very good and very thoughtful, and I didn't know it existed originally, is this in here, this connection, I've covered it over in silver tape. Uh, this is, means the, control, the connection to the cable, the controller, um, this means that if, if the wheel, the back wheel comes loose, suddenly it pulls this and there's no damage done, you just reconnect it and tighten up the nose. Now, that brings me to a problem that this bike has. And the old one had it as well, and it happened in both bikes. Uh, the vibrations from the torque in the, in the back wheel work out these outer nuts very, very loose, very, very quickly. So please check them, check them about once a week. And I've found actually that I've had to put Loctite uh, tread locker on them. In fact, let me just zoom in there if I can a little bit. And uh, I've had to these work these these nuts work very very loose very quickly. So don't be afraid to 
go to a hardware and buy some thread locker, put it, loosen the nut back, put a drop of it on and tighten it in. And since I've done that, they haven't loosened out. But both bikes had a problem with that. The wheel came out and when I went up steps, it came loose, unknown to me. And because this cable attachment here, there was no damage done. Uh, but on the old bike, it actually reached the cable clean out of the controller box and damaged the cable. So, um, so beware of that. That's, a, that's an oversight that Fido have had. They really should put thread lock on high tension nuts like those. Okay, um, the standard tourney derailleur, a lot of people seem to be rated. Uh, I can't fault it, I'll be honest with you. It might be cheap or whatever, whatever else. It's fine, it works, it does its job. It did its job on the old bike as well that I had. And uh, no complaints, no complaints, to be honest. Now, to, the chain does pick up a lot of rust very quickly. Uh, I've used, um, I think it's two-stroke engine oil in that case. Uh, just to run it across, but put across any oil oil would be so much better than that. It gets spectacularly red colour and rust very, very quickly if you don't. Anyway, it's only a small minor item. The rear light uh, is very good when you switch it on with the power. Switch it on there. And there it is during the day. And um, it's very, very good. Uh, it, it is not a brake light, sadly. Um, there is possibility in some of these controllers to actually wire it in as a brake light. That's another story. Okay. The mud guards are fine, they're nice, but they're a bit short. Just today, I've added in this extra splash thing under this mud guard here. You can buy these for about three euro in a bike shop. And uh, nah, we'll see, it's better than not having it, I guess. Let's see how it holds up. Um, and let's see. So, other than that, what do I have to say? Um, Power. So that's the Fido T1. Um, I do like it. I still like it as a bike. It's lovely. It's, it's still about 10 pounds too heavy for my likings. But it's a lot of utility, a lot of strength. Brilliant at going up hills. Um, and right now I have it the way I like it. I have to say it's good. It's good. Um, there's been a lot of comparisons to this between this and the Cyrus or Komoda. And there's a bit more utility on this bike because of the basket and the lovely big headlight and so on. Uh, but the Cyrus at the same time is three or four inches of this because you don't have the battery here. It's three or four inches shorter. So take your pick. And it, but at the same time, the Cyrus is only. Um, about five or six pounds lighter. I think it's 74 pounds instead of nine, 79 pounds. So it doesn't really, it's got a smaller battery. Uh, one thing I would like about this bike is a half size battery if there was one available to buy. Because you don't always want to be, this battery is 13.2 13 pounds, 13 pounds in weight. You don't always want to be hauling it around town if you're not going a big distance. It would be really nice to be able to have a half size battery at half the cost but you could slide in here and maybe have a little legs you can slide down to hold it up. So, you know, it'd be half the height or whatever. Uh, it would be a nice thing to be able to do that, um, I think. And uh, it'd be really good to, to them to have it. Um, it would just give you more options. Because that's the one thing I don't like is that big, heavy gawk of a battery. It works well, though. It works well. Um, it just wouldn't be my kind of thing. But apart from that, Let's see, um, it's good, I do like it, and there are lots of different things. Some people put saddlebags on the backs of these. I've mounted this saddlebag here, by the way, to show you. And I've used that, I've mounted it in here by taking up the wood first, and it's permanently there, that saddlebag. And it, it just works out fine, so it gives me some utility and all of that. But there are possibilities. And this bike will this bike will hold a lot in terms of weight and carry a lot of weight. Um, 
and that's one thing that this bike is very very good at and it's also very comfortable so that's the Fido T1 uh, it cost me originally 1520 euro delivered and with it I've got this replacement bike which was replaced free as well and I managed to sell on the old bike for 300 so I've no complaints and it's good now the way it is and all of that would I buy one again? Would I recommend it again? Well, not really. Why? Because if you buy one now new, you get it with the, with the slow controller and the slow speed limits. And if you replace, if you order a replacement controller, I doubt very much they're going to send you the old type of controller, the fast controller. So, it's a bit of a bitch. So because of that, I wouldn't really recommend buying it. But if you get one second hand and you're happy with all of that arrangement, that's fair enough. Of course you do have the possibility in the future of changing out the controller plus the display completely for a different system. Um, because this is a 25 amp controller without the, without the speed limits. The new one is a 25 amp very same controller with built in speed limits on it. Which is really stupid to be doing, for Frito to be doing. So, um, it's up to yourself. If you're a bit of a techie and you're happy to be changing things out and all of that. It's not difficult to change out the controller, by the way. You just remove the battery and you remove the floor underneath the plastic floor. Under the battery, four screws. And another four screws removes the steel plate at the top of that green box there. Um, and when you do that, out comes the controller. There's lots of wires on it. You disconnect all the connectors and put in the new one. And it's done in a few minutes really and it's not difficult to do if you have the right controller the old type of controller thankfully i have but if this controller should ever blow or go well i'll have a spare one i'll put in the new one the slow one that'll be fine for the while but then i look to get a third party controller and change it out completely and change the display as well that's a pity because the display is neat and it's working very well right now and i'm fond of it i'm not feeling it Anyway, it comes with the territory, so if you know about that and you're happy with the speeds and all of that, that's fair enough. But I wasn't happy with a 15 mile per hour speed limit. 18, no problem. Um, that's what I have now. It actually goes to 23 if I want miles per hour. Um, but anyway, that aside, that's the Fido T1. And um, it's a fun bike, I like it. And I really have no more to say about it, so I don't think I'm going to be doing any more videos on it. One thing I should say is, uh, one thing that Fido don't do well, is they didn't do it at all. Is they, is they didn't seal up anything on this box. So you've got no um, storm seals or anything like that. And all the water in the big storm goes right into that box there. So it's bad design, they should really have sealed it up. Now I sealed it up with a hot glue gun very very easy to do you get them in any hardware turn up the bike and seal it up plenty and I recommend you doing that if you get one of these bikes because you'll get lots and lots of rain here in Ireland you get rain all the time and uh, you're going to encounter that problem and you'll turn it on and you'll see D2 flashing and blah 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 won't be working and you have dampness come in and all that stuff so uh, I don't recommend you leave it go get a hot glue gun, it costs about five or six euro and glue away. You can see there's white little glue there on each side of where I've done it on the floor and glue up everything you see and uh, just to seal it up a bit, it's a bit common sense that's all. And apart from that, Fido say this new frame is going to last a long time. Uh, well, let's see if it does. But um, I can't really complain with the money I suppose been cheap enough um, but whether I'd recommend it uh, but, 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 that's a matter for you and you have to consider what the competition is out there a lot of people uh, go the Engway, the Engway bikes you see the liveries using them a lot and they're the same kind of thing except they're just not as nice a bike maybe but they're also a bit lighter they're about 10 or 15 pounds lighter they don't have this big huge humongous heavy battery so, you know, whatever it is. And bear in mind that this thing here that I've put in is from um, the Rad Runner for carrying stuff. Most of them are just simply step-through bikes. Um, 
obviously normally you don't see that on these, on these bikes. Uh, but you can always add them in, I do recommend them, I like them. But I don't like the coffee cup holder here, that's a bit of crap, I never use that. It doesn't work at all. Okay, that's that. So, Fido T1 Revised Edition. That's her. I'll leave it at that.